hello, Elvis. Hello. Hi. Hi, Haru. We almost lost you. No, 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 no. I'm here. <laughs> Okay, great. Glad yeah. that you joined. Um, so yeah, since we only have three minutes left, I just yeah. wanted to ask uh, yeah. if you like, uh, how do you want me to introduce you? Or I mean, like, do you want me to uh, tell the audience uh, where you're from, like what you're doing? Or like, do you have any yeah. preferences? It's okay, like, uh, it's totally okay with me. Yeah, I think who is calling me? Is it somewhere from there? <laughs> Hello? Hi, <laughs> I am online right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I'm set for now, just to part right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. That was Eileen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because I called her. Because you, uh, because I also called you, but you didn't pick. But I, I thought maybe because it was the, like the the number that you don't know, maybe that's why you didn't pick. Uh, no, no. Actually, I had left my phone like on the other end. It, I'm I'm in a very big hole, so <laughs> I see. <laughs> my phone was on. Okay. <laughs> Okay, then, uh, okay, I can hear you well and your video is also good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, okay, I will introduce you just as you, you know, yourself, Elvis, you're from Kenya and you what, you work or study now? I'm I, a I student at Joson, I study mechanics. Oh, oh, okay, mm. so you're a student at Joson University studying mechanics. Okay, ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm a physics major myself. So. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, it's kind of related. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, okay, oh, we have one minute left. So just uh, take a quick rest if you okay. can, and then we will start very soon. Yeah, so do, do I switch off my camera or you will arrest or here? Uh, yeah, you can, yeah, it's, maybe you can just unmute yourself, but leave your camera on. Okay. Okay. One more thing, Haru, like the PPT, do you uh, do it from there or I do it myself? Oh, if you want, I can share it on your behalf. Do you yeah. want me to do that? Mm, okay, yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, sure. Okay, I, I prepared it already. So let's see, people are joining. And uh, yeah, I think... Should we start? Okay, let's just start because it's time. Okay, and Binashi, Chang Chong, how do you say all? Oh, good afternoon, everyone. And since it's the time, let me start our GIC talk. Uh, once again, I welcome everyone who joined us and I believe that more people are coming the, all the way. And for today's GIC talk, we have our guest. His name is Elvis. I, I'm pretty sure that most of you already know him. Uh, he's from Kenya and currently he's a student at Choson University and he studies mechanics. And today in his talk, he will talk about the time. And have you ever stopped to think what if there was no time? And what if time was just a concept in your mind and not exactly the reality? Well, these and all other questions will be answered in Elvis' presentation. So without further ado, let me welcome our guest, Elvis. Please, the floor is yours. Elvis, I'm so sorry. Could you please unmute yourself and start again? Thank you. Okay, uh, 
As Haru said, my name is uh, Elvis. I do come from Kenya and currently I'm a student in Gwangju's Joseon University. I do take mechanics and uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, welcome to this talk. I hope that uh, you can get uh, something interesting, something to uh, amaze you more through this talk. So I chose uh, the title of my talk as time and uh, I'll be looking at time uh, uh, with it being like a concept or reality. We live with time each day, maybe to an extent, taking it for granted. And um, I think there's much more behind time that we can uh, think of and uh, we can look into. So uh, how many of us here maybe still look up to the sun to tell the time, maybe if you've done that before in your life, Maybe when you are young, you look up the sun and like, oh, it's lunchtime. I need to rush home, take a meal. And um, maybe also if you view, listen to the uh, the crow of a cro cockerel in the morning to wake up. So kukuri kuku, then you wake up. Yeah, <laughs> uh, some of us have gone through that. Yeah. And um, another basic question. When you look at your clock or watch, what do you see? Oh, somebody said time. <laughs> you can see time. That's amazing. Yeah. Well, clocks and watches are basic um, devices for measuring time that we use to this day. And I'll be talking a little bit more about those uh, after a few. Uh, so I started, uh, I'll start with the definition of time. So one might ask, what exactly is time? What exactly is time? Time, uh, you can look at it in three aspects. So there's one in like physics and philosophy, and we look at time as a physical phenomenon. And the second one is like in psychology, where we look it, at it like just as our sense of passing time. And the third is in mathematics and engineering, where we look at time uh, as a unit of measurement. We use it to measure and regulate our lives. So we can basically define, uh, divide the definition of time into two parts. One is that time is the general concept. Uh, it, it is the general concept of time, of time as pertains to our general existence and what all this adds to. In this sense, time can be defined as the indefinite continued progress of existence and events in the past, present, and future regarded as a whole. Yeah, a little bit complicated, is it right? Yeah. <laughs> and the second definition of time is uh, what we experience each day when we get through our daily, uh, daily life uh, schedules. And um, here we can define, define time as a point of time as measured in hours and minutes and maybe seconds past midnight or noon. Okay, are we together? Yeah, so a combination of the two definitions results in the general definition of time as, um, well, as described by Wikipedia, the continued sequence of existence and events that occurs in a uh, apparently irreversible succession from the past through the present and into the future. Uh, so we look at time, uh, when whatever we think of anything, it's like based on time where you like uh, the past, you think of uh, past events in your life and the present, the moment you're living in now and the future, the, the dreams you hold for your future and what you like to achieve in future. So this, it's all, uh, it's uh, all uh, around time, it's based on time. So we can look at the main uses of time. The main uses of time, uh, one is like to sequence events. So uh, to put like events in order and like to have like a list of, of events. And uh, secondly, it's like to compare the duration of events or the intervals between them. So here we have uh, kind of like a physical and mathematical aspect, as I mentioned earlier from our points of view. And thirdly, we have, uh, we use time to quantify the rate of change of quantities in material reality or in the conscious experience. So here we also have a little bit of the psychological 
aspect and more of the scientific, uh, phys physical aspect too. So, uh, you might ask yourself, uh, well, how important is time in our lives? Uh, time is how most of us these days make our living from day to day. How? If you ask the question, um, most people today, you keep yourself alive or you keep your family alive, those who are dependent on you by selling your time. Yeah, I said it, by selling your time. Uh, this more explicitly in the case of workers, uh, professionals or consultants, normally you hear like you're paid by the hour. Yeah, so this is, you're basically uh, selling your time. Or if you are on the other end, you're buying the time. So uh, normally wages will be paid by the hour or you have like monthly incomes or you have like annual incomes. Yeah. And um, uh, in the present day economies, uh, the present day economies are largely sustained by the lending and borrowing of money. And uh, if you look at this, when you lend or borrow money, then interest is also involved. And what is interest? Interest is what you pay uh, for the period that you lend the money. So you that time period, you pay for it in time in terms of interest. So the more the longer the period the time period, the more interest you have to pay. <laughs> yeah. So I would like to start by looking at the history of time. Yeah, the history of time. And um Mm, where does time start? Where does it all start? Well, uh, for, for those of us who are more like on the scientific side of life, like to uh, maybe science or just a little bit interested, uh, you'll, you'll know that the concept of time alongside space began with the Big Bang. You know, the Big Bang, uh, maybe you, you'll have heard of the Big Bang theory. Uh, which is like uh, defines the start of the universe. Uh, okay, not the sitcom, but the actual Big Bang. <laughs> so uh, the Big Bang marked the start of the universe. And before this Big Bang, all matter was packed into one extremely tiny dot, what uh, is defined as dark matter. I think this is a topic for another day, but yeah. Uh, this was some 13.7 billion years ago. Uh, pretty long spin, right? Yeah. And uh, what marks the big difference before and after the Big Bang is what explains the existence of time after and not before the Big Bang. So time is measured by motion and becomes evident through motion. We'll come to realize more about this as we go on. Like the formation of space and heavenly bodies provided the tools that were set in motion and that's the start of time because you look at the big bang and you see that uh, it was through the big bang that heavenly bodies such as planets uh, the stars asteroids all these that make up the universe were made they came into formation and uh, uh, when we look at time it's actually like a correlation of the movement of these bodies. Okay, let's uh, get back to that as we go on. Time is more evident in our everyday lives with the passing of days into nights and changes of seasons. So this is actually the basic fundamental concept that necessitated the need to create tools to tell time since back long ago. And um, the natural natural rotation and revolution of the earth around the sun gave the most basic measurements of time, uh, which well, basically up to date is uh, kind of the same thing, kind of the same concept here. Yeah. I think everyone of us here should be familiar maybe with the sundial. Yeah. And well, the sundial was an invention that came up from like um, the uh, shadow clock, shadow clock, which is based on the movement of the sun across the sky. So back in the days when um, people didn't like uh, used to measure time that much per se, uh, the, the shadow clocks, which then uh, evolved into the sundials in ancient Egypt, used to, be, used to be used to measure time. 
and this was based on the uh, position of the sun in the sky and the shadow that it uh, was uh, produced by the sun diode. So this, I would say, was not a very reliable uh, way of measuring time. And the, at that point of time, the, it was actually not the concept of time being measured, but the period of daylight, because uh, with the absence of daylight, that meant that you could, you could not measure time. <laughs> so what happened at night? Well, people slept. I think, yeah, and um, well, that necessitated the <laughs> uh, invention of other uh, time measuring devices. And here we get to uh, have things like sun clocks, candle clocks, and water clocks and such. So uh, if you've learned some Korean history too, you'll know like maybe like King Sejong is not only famous for uh, making hangul, but also some uh, scientific uh, instruments and one of them being the water clock, the Korean water clock, yeah. And so the ancient Egyptians used like very simple sundials and uh, the sundials, these sundials were divided into smaller parts. So this way we get like the basic 12 hour period uh, from, from sunrise to sunset. And uh, this was like maybe back in 1500 BC or something. So after dividing the interval between sunrise and sunset into 12 parts, uh, this has lasted up to date where we see that uh, there's current terminology uh, that actually dates back to then. But most of the current terminology about time and type keeping were actually originated from the Babylonians and the Jews. Mm, so from the Jews, uh, if any of you has read like uh, the story of creation in the Bible, you'll get like uh, to know about the seven day week in Genesis, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, for the, we have like the ancient Romans during the Republic, this may be some new information from, from for some of you, their week actually had like uh, eight days, eight days. And uh, this include like a shopping day where people would just go by and sell things, yeah. So this is just to tell you like, you are used to the concept of a week having uh, seven days, but uh, in essence, uh, this is just like a, con a human convention, yeah. So the Greeks, um, the Greeks after borrowing the sundials from the Egyptians and other civilizations, they developed many of the forms and principles uh, that are used and uh, these were adapted by the Romans. The Romans also used like uh, water clocks to, uh, to tell the time when there was no sun because well uh, <laughs> you also need to know the time when it's maybe a rainy day or it's at night yeah right. So to date you can see structures that were used to tell time for civilizations advanced uh, in the past, uh, such as like um, the hemisphere Greek sundial from, uh, this is in Al Khatrum in Af Afghanistan. Then we also have like the Chinese sundial of the Eastern Han Dynasty and uh, the sundial stone in uh, Ireland. And we also have like the giant sundial of uh, Jantar Mantar in Jaipur, India. So this just to show like uh, all these like uh, civilization, all these like uh, uh, people from the past uh, really had the yearning to make sense of like the passage of time and measure time and use it like to basically uh, govern uh, their lives. So uh, after having looked at this, I think uh, this can give us like a little bit a more new definition of time. And here we can define time again as uh, the dimension that helps to order our lives. Because, well, if you think of time, uh, what else does it do? Just like basically gives order to our lives. So if you look at this, like uh, time has been uh, used uh, just to like uh, bring more order into our lives and make sure that the activities we do uh, are kind of regulated on a kind of scale, yeah. And th this is like uh, the time. So 
especially with the efforts to categorize uh, our world of experience in the best possible mathematical or scientific way. Yeah. So looking at the, maybe the past research concerning time, the past research. Uh, many of you will know, will have heard of uh, Alban, uh, Albert Einstein, right? Yeah, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein redefined the phenomena as a function of space. So this is like time gaining a whole new meaning from time just being uh, like uh, based on the period of sun. Now we are defining it as a function of space. So that means that space is a dimension of time and vice versa. Time is a dimension of space. And in addition, uh, he provided independently verifiable evidence of this discovery by providing light. Uh, by uh, he said, like light has a measurable dimension in space over time, which is a standard we can employ to uh, tie it down meaningfully. Uh, his means of doing this uh, were his own invention. However, the underlying truth of what he was expressing was what he discovered, and there may well there may be way way more to discover as well as time goes by and as you will see like uh, every uh, uh, measurement of time it's just it keeps on advancing and uh, well um, many of you if, if you are interested in science or something the error is very important so the accuracy I should say the accuracy so if you look back in the days the, when uh, the it used to be measured according to the period of daylight, then the accuracy will maybe be according to the sun. It used to be like very unreliable. But um, at this time when uh, Albert Einstein was alive, then the accuracy of uh, uh, time measuring instruments was maybe to 10 seconds in a day. That means like only an error of 10 seconds well, in a day will, will be, well, there would be only an error of 10 seconds in a day for a whole 24 hour period. And uh, we also see that in the 18th century, the clock emerged as a scientific instrument on its own right. Yeah, so uh, before like um, people started uh, using uh, the clocks and watches, they used to be, they, they used to be like very big structures, big towers and uh, that's why you had like city clocks and uh, church clocks maybe that had to dime uh, or chime by the hour to notify people of the time. So it wasn't a simple instrument that you could just like uh, carry around that many people do nowadays on their wrist or even on their cell phone. It's actually just a part of the cell phone, a software, I should say. And uh, during this period of time in the 18th century, uh, the clock was based more on the pendulum. So the pendulum, uh, it just like, it, its motion can go on for like a, a very long period of time, I should say, because there are also other factors that come in. So at first, uh, the pendulum clock owes its uh, refinement to Galileo. Galileo actually noticed that the regularity of a suspended lap uh, swinging back and forth, uh, it it like swung back and forth regularly, and this was when he was still a student, maybe uh, it's in a certain cathedral, maybe in Pisa. Yeah, so he was still a student, and he made this discovery. So uh, after making this discovery, then this uh, was incorporated into like uh, the clocks of the time and. Uh, the clocks now could be made, uh, could be made into like um, more, I should say like they could get smaller as this, uh, uh, well, the analog clocks that we know of today, they use like uh, small machine parts that uh, there, are some, there are some clocks that if you know of, they are not powered by batteries they like just go uh, on, the, they are powered by their own momentum. And this is like the same exact thing. So this was uh, very important as it was 
uh, invented by Galileo, no, discovered by Galileo. So if you go to the Science Museum in London, for those of you who might be fortunate, uh, you might be able to see the work of the 20th century uh, watch and clock makers. So they continued this uh, uh, tradition and incorporated as much as uh, science into their uh, devices as possible. But this did not just stop, uh, stop there because we see like uh, the measurement of time moving from uh, just a simple sundial measuring the uh, period of daylight to using pen pendulums so in this sense, like uh, it's a more mechanical time. And then uh, in the 1950s, we have like the development of the atomic clock, uh, which is very interesting now. Uh, it's the development of the atomic clock. This means that uh, time is becoming a concept that is a, uh, it's not based, it doesn't have to stick to the geographical position you're at on the, on the planet. It, it, you might uh, use uh, time even if you go into outer space or on to another planet. So you can be able to have a means of measuring time. Yeah, which draws the question like, we are used to the 24 hour day period because this is based on the rotation of the earth and the regulation of the earth around the uh, sun. But maybe, or maybe one day you end up living on Mars. So do you think like it will be a whole, different system of time or how will it be yeah take a thought and maybe think of it maybe we might go to the back uh, to the eight day period or something yeah <laughs> you never know so these are food for thought yeah uh, and then we also have like moving on from the atomic clock in the 1960s we had like the invention of the lasers and this actually changed time measurement forever. So lasers can produce uh, pulses for, uh, for a duration of a few attoseconds. This is very small. So, and uh, the accuracy of international time measurement this day is reflected in this. So uh, we have seen that during this time, this is what and, uh, like traveling, overseas possible because time is the uh, me is the the measurement of time is what led to the uh, i should say like to the invention of the latitudes and longitudes which are, are also functions of time actually uh, so these these latitudes and longitudes were mainly uh, they were mainly uh, made, they were mainly made in order to enable travel from uh, one end of the uh, planet to another. Because what simply happened is like people used to travel by sea to go far. And uh, if you're traveling by sea, once you get offshore, then if you have nothing to guide you, then you lose your sense of direction, then you might find yourself anywhere. And uh, this is like one of the um, eras that the, the earlier uh, drawers of the like world map made. So Colum Columbus, when he was traveling from, uh, from Europe to, uh, he was in his mind, he was traveling to the Indies, which is like, uh, I should say India. Yeah, he, in his mind, he was traveling to India, but then due to the errors on the maps presented by the uh, drawing of the latitudes and longitudes uh, to an era, he arrived in the America instead. And this led to the discovery of America by Columbus. So uh, this is where uh, time measurement has moved on from. And uh, uh, the research on time continues on. It, it's still going up to the present day. Why? Because, well, um, scientists believe time to just be like a, um, a virtual thing. Well, as I said, so far as you've seen time, it's grown complicated over time. Uh, and uh, Over time, yeah. <laughs> it's grown com com uh, complicated with the passing of seasons and, and 
the development of the technology behind it because like it's become the very basic uh, uh, measurement, the very basic uh, fundam fundamental that governs the order in which our lives uh, occur. But if you look at it in, in the event that there was no time, uh, what does it mean? Maybe we will all be living just in chaos or I don't know. It's hard to think of, right? Yeah. So that's why like presently uh, time, the definition of time has changed so much. Like looking at the present research on time, time is being defined through uh, an atomic frequency, which is the uh, cesium standard. So the system, cesium standard measures the exact number of cycles of radiation that it takes for a cesium 133 atom to transition from one state of energy into another. So you can see that time, uh, the way it's measured, it's now like, uh, it's now no longer based on the sun at all. It's uh, now based on cesium, which is like an element on the periodic table for those of you know. So it's, uh, it's, it's based on this element and this is what are we after? If we are, we are doing this, we are going after the accuracy. We need to find like the most accurate, most accurate uh, time we can find because even presently, uh, there's still error when it comes to the measurement of time. So this is to a very small degree, maybe to just uh, some nanoseconds. Mm -hmm. But the use of like the atoms, it makes the, uh, it makes it possible to have a very accurate measurement of time, and uh, this uh, enables uh, many more things like even uh, space travel and uh, maybe in future too, uh, time travel to the past. Yeah, people really like look forward to traveling in the past and maybe trying maybe to like uh, alter their timeline or something so that they have like maybe better features or. Um, change their decisions. If you did something wrong at some point and you want to better it, then time travel might be the answer, but just not yet. Yeah. So this is uh, Albert Einstein. And what did Albert Einstein say about time? He said, <laughs> when you sit with a nice girl for two hours, it seems like two minutes. But when you sit on a hot stove, for two minutes, it seems like two hours. <laughs> and this is defin his definition of relativity. So uh, time is also a kind of a relative, uh, it's a very relative uh, subject, a very relative element and a very relative concept. Mm -hmm. So moving on. Uh, I think we'll have a look at the, uh, we've, we've looked at the research on time, at religion. Religion has had like a very important, uh, or should I say hold, a very important uh, influence on time. Uh, maybe I can, well, basically time is measured, is mentioned so many times in the religions. If you look at, there's a Bible in the verse, uh, this is, should be Ecclesiastes chapter three. Yeah, verse one and two maybe it says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. A time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot. So what does this mean? That uh, even when it comes to uh, deities and the higher powers, then time is very much involved. Um, yeah, uh, as much as religion is true, then time too is true. It's a reality. Yeah. So, and uh, if we can also have a look at the Quran, yeah, at, at the Quran chapter 13 and uh, chapter 13, uh, 38, and part 13 says, for everything, there is a time prescribed. So everything has everything happens in its own time. This is kind of uh, similar to uh, 
the verses in the Bible too, yeah. So I didn't have an opportunity to look at other um, holy scriptures from other denominations. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's a little bit of a lot of work, but yeah. Next time I'll try to so <laughs> look forward to next time too. So uh, most uh, in our daily lives we'll hear a lot of uh, people saying, ah, God knows when that will happen. We are leaving everything to God to happen in its own time and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Even uh, if you're not uh, maybe like a religious or something, you uh, kind of like uh, use this phrase. Yeah. And so you will see that we are kind of on the clock always running. So if it's not to make money, uh, we're struggling to stay alive and uh, make, good, make most of the time we have because eventually it will end and we'll have no more time when we die and there's a time to be born and there is a time to die. So here you can see like uh, the Grim Reaper, yeah. Yeah, the Green Reaper is all, always coming for somebody. So if you look at uh, most of history, uh, uh, this goes back to the history a little bit. Ordinary people did not have like a regular and easy access to any kind of time measuring devices. Like this is much back in the days. Um, as I said earlier, people maybe used to look at the sky on a sunny day and see where the sun is to be able to tell the time and uh, basically for these people uh, time did not exist like the concept of time that you have in your mind now they did not have it back then but um, this is where the religion comes in like in medieval times uh, there's one group who was ruled by in a time in a way that might make uh, sense to us and these were like the Benedictine monks. So they had like uh, regular prayers every day. They had to like uh, do like, I think, yeah, around eight, uh, eight uh, prayers per day. And this used to be called hours, like eight uh, canonical hours. So uh, I don't know the exact times, but uh, the signal that announced each canonical hour like the start of prayer used to be like a, a bell or something yeah and the measurement of this was based on uh, the period of day like the sun so they used to like use like the sundial or the uh, maybe the candles or the water clocks too and uh, from well this is an interesting part uh, so the bell they used to ring used to be called a clocker this is a Latin word. So you can see where the word clock comes from. Yeah, the Latin word for bell is clocka. So this came from the Benedict, uh, Benedictine monks back in the days. And uh, we also looked at the part where we make our livelihoods through the selling of our time. Yeah. And uh, during this is a concept that uh, developed back with the Romans who started like uh, the concept of buying and selling time. And as this became capitalized, um, then uh, the in, uh, development of time uh, and especially time measurement grew more and more. So the Romans in, uh, introduced like the charging of interest on a loan and uh, this was actually before it was, it used to be not allowed. It was banned for like most religions, maybe Christians and Muslims. But uh, as time went by and uh, international economies and markets grew and uh, it became more necessary, like as a way of survival, then uh, I think everybody had just to accept it. But up to this day, like uh, the paying of interest on a loan is officially not, uh, it's still banned by the Islam religion, yeah, right? So uh, we see that uh, religion, religious has played a very important part in history, especially with the politics. We have like, um, maybe some of you will know of the dark ages, and this is where really 
religion, basically it ruled over everything else. It was the politics. And um, so uh, most of these uh, inventors and scientists were also uh, akin, uh, uh, what should I say? Okay, they, they tried to follow religion maybe <laughs> to some extent, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we see that religion too is uh, more of time-based as uh, uh, they, are, they religion puts like a start and stop to everything. So you do something at this point of time uh, with the passage of time, then there'll be a consequence and you have to make good use of your time so that you might be able to have a, um, a good result in the coming days or in the afterlife. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, uh, I, I, uh, I had a I had a, an interesting question for everybody. Yeah, yeah. Uh, time is basically divided into uh, years, months, days, hours, coming all down to minutes, seconds, and nowadays even uh, up to nanoseconds, up to seconds, like very small units. So, uh, but the division of time to be like, 60 hours, uh, 60 minutes and 60 seconds. Why do you think this is like uh, the number used? The, any number could have been chosen, but we have 360 degrees for a circle and uh, 60 minutes, 60 minutes for to make up an hour and 60 seconds to make a minute. So uh, this was actually developed back in the, uh, in the time that latitudes and longitudes were still being uh, were still being uh, come up with, like the the invention of, of uh, latitudes and longitudes was being perfected on. So uh, for um, uh, okay, yeah, it's the Babylonians that I'm thinking of. The Babylonians uh, used to use this uh, number of system that used uh, 60s and 360 because 60 and 360 is very easy to work on. It's very easy to subdivide as a whole number. So uh, to this day, uh, that's why we use like uh, 60 minutes to make up a degree, 60 minutes to make up an hour and 360 degrees to make up a circle. And for the 12 hour, uh, the 12 hour, we've seen that that came from the uh, Egyptians. And uh, the seven days a week that came from the uh, more from the Jews, yeah, yeah, from the Jews, because we see like uh, from the Bible in the book of Genesis, the world was created in seven days, seven days. So uh, we see that um, this is where the uh, concepts and the uh, and the terminologies related to time came from. And uh, I would also like to talk a little bit more about the atomic clock, which is like uh, the one we use presently to measure time. Yeah, so the atomic clock provides for much more accuracy. The atomic clock uh, provides for much more accuracy. Uh, the first one was uh, constructed by I think they were English physicists back in 1955. And the atomic clock uh, makes use of the fact that the, uh, when suitable, uh, suitably energized, um, the outer electron of a cesium atom, I introduced the cesium uh, element to you earlier, right? The cesium atom flips its magnetic direction relative to the nucleus. In the process, it emits or absorbs a quantum of energy in the form of radiation. And uh, this has a constant frequency of maybe more than 9 billion cycles per second. And this is like constant, yeah. So the idea behind the atomic clock, or it's actually, uh, 
sometimes refers to as the cesium clock because of the element used to measure uh, to uh, it this uh, idea was uh, is to like uh, bomb, bomb burn the cesium with microwaves uh of close to like 9 billion cycles per second the microwaves they cause an energy oscillation of the same and like uh frequency around 9 billion cycles per second in the cesium atoms and that in turn regulates the microwaves uh holding them to exactly that frequency uh, a simple feedback loop uh will provide the ultimate perfect timekeeper from this because you see once you bombard them at that frequency of 9 billion cycles then the atoms they will be able to maintain this same frequency and this is like uh, the what we need to measure time we need like the constant frequency over a long period of time so by using the very basis of uh, the very basis of matter we have a new definition of the second to be 9 billion, uh, 9 billion, like this exact number is quite long, it's 9 billion and some other numbers, but it's 9 billion uh, plus ticks of the cesium clock. So, and so from this, we got the official definition, which was adopted back in 1967, or the official definition of a second to be. 9 billion periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between the two hyperline levels of the ground state of the cesium-133 atom. So this is the new definition of a second. And uh, I, as, as I told you earlier, I wanted to uh, introduce this to you so that you know that uh, when you look at the time on your clock, most people nowadays use the digital clocks, right? So uh the time when when back in the days when when it used to be analog clocks the time that you looked at on your clock was the time uh it was produced by your clock because your clock had the mechanical parts that moved and the uh, and were able to tell the time but uh nowadays the clocks are more digital and uh most of the time like people will match their clocks maybe with the internet time so this internet time where does it come from that, that's the question and this this is where the atomic clock comes in the atomic clock uh, is what gives us the very accurate uh, time that we use to this day and so we have like time uh, it doesn't like need all that much uh, setting over again like back in the day uh, the clock had to be set each day but at this point in time the uh, the clock has to be set maybe just um, very many years, okay, <laughs> very many years, maybe it, it can go to uh, thousands to hundreds of thousands of years, yeah. So we have seen like the development of time is what has led to like the development of many more other factors like world travel, uh, the invention of the latitudes and longitudes, and even to this day, the uh the factor that is able to guide you on your way home when you enter your car and you switch on your uh, navigation system the gps this is all like uh based on time measurement so uh for for the gps system uh for those who don't know like it's based on uh latitude uh your location and time yeah so maybe if anyone is uh, curious about this then I'll be able to tell you more, a little, a little bit more about the GPS system, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, unfortunately, I think my time is almost up and uh, for now, I'll be taking more of questions about time, which might be, um, <laughs> I don't know if I'll be able to answer, I'll try my best because this is quite a hard topic actually, yeah very scientific in some extent and uh, can also get very philosophical <laughs> yeah uh -huh. so any questions 
Yeah. Thank you, Elvis, for the, such an informative talk. And okay. yeah, it was very interesting to listen. Uh, since I'm a physics major myself, yeah, I we also uh, learned in school and university the time from the um, perspective of that you can calculate the time and yeah. how you can calculate this. Work. But we, uh, well, yeah, I didn't t take any. Uh, like so, so, um, philosophy classes, uh, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah, but uh, thank you for the insights. And uh, I have a question uh, mm -hmm. in our chat room, and let me uh, let me read it aloud. Yeah. Sure. Uh, so, uh, Doctor Shin asks: Is time different on Earth from time in space? Uh, uh, this is a very hard question. For now. Uh, because uh, our time is based on the movement of the, the rotation of the earth. That's why we get like 24, like the earth, when the earth rotates, it, uh, one rotation of the earth is like 24 minutes long, right? So uh, the time that we use is based on the rotation of the earth and to the revolution of the earth around the sun. So that essentially means that time on earth is different than time in space where Maybe time is measured more like in light years, right? But uh, for we have like astronauts going out to space to do their research and everything. So the time they use is based on the time that we use on Earth because they are from Earth. <laughs> yeah. So in the in the event that maybe we had astronauts from maybe another planet, maybe and they were in space, then they will use a, a different time uh, system or time format altogether. Yeah, and uh, if we had people living in space and not on Earth, then they will also have their uh, own way of measuring time. Because if you look at it, uh, if you are in space, you're not on Earth. Earth is like a, uh, well, it's, it's, it's not, it's, let's, let me say it's round. So it rotates. But then when you're in space, and uh, actually I've heard that in space it's dark, you expect it to be light, it to be all bright with the sun and everything, but yeah, right, it's kind of dark, right? Yeah, so uh, the basic answer is that I think time is different on Earth and in space. <laughs> Thank you, and we have a following question. Uh -huh. Why, uh, well, it's kind of a personal one, I guess. Why are you so much interested in time, personally, <laughs> yourself? Oh my goodness, yeah. Personally, I think it started, um, how did it start? Uh, well, I always, I, I was, uh, at some point in my time, I had like, uh, I started doubt, doubting everything, having doubts on the uh, fundamentals that our lives are based on. And I started feeling like, uh, most of the uh, most of our life, most of our life uh, activities and the things we do are based on like uh, concepts, um, mostly historical concepts and factors that are way beyond our control. So, for example, if you look at time and the time constraints, it started from a point when people didn't use to measure time and the, nece the necessity to put order into the lives we live in, order per se, because it's order for it, it benefits other people. Yeah. So this necessitated the uh, development of uh, time uh, measuring devices and uh, the ordering of time so that uh, basically people will be controlled. Yeah. So for me, I was like, uh, well, <laughs> what is time? I have grown up since I was born just knowing that oh, there's time to wake up, there's time to eat, there's time to go to school. But uh, was it always like this or um, uh, um, how come like I have to live with these constraints that I was not, uh, I, feel, I, I feel like I was not a part of making. Yeah, but if you start asking yourself this question then, it uh, flows over to very many other aspects of life, like uh, religion and the uh, politics and just everything else. And uh, maybe back to the big question, why do we live? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I think, um, yeah, just out of curiosity, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, thank you for your answer. And uh, we have one more question. Uh -huh. So, um, what is the so as uh, you may know, different nationalities, different people have different views, different aspects of time, right? As you yeah. say, some people think that, uh, yeah, some people don't think much into it. It's just a concept that uh, maybe we're born with it or we just uh -huh. grasp it from the very early ages because yeah. everything is governed by time, right? Yeah. And not only the time on the clock, but also, for example, we will go to walk after your daddy comes home or something like that. Like when after is also kind of the uh, something that shows the time flow, right? Exactly. So, yeah, so the question is, what is the the attitude or for the attitude for time uh, in Korea and in your home country, Kenya? Is it different? Is it uh, is the perspective different uh, in Korea and in your home country? Uh, well, first of all, generally speaking, I think uh, for many people because it's just something that they are born into and something that is surrounding them everywhere. I think just people just, uh, I would say take time for granted. So just it's think of it as something that is meant to be a natural thing. So I would say that uh, for most people I've met both here in Korea, back in my country and my uh, foreign friends too, uh, they just look at time as well. What's the time? Time to uh, go somewhere, time to do something. and. Uh, they uh, they don't look into time uh, that much actually yeah just like as a part of their lives but on the other hand uh, we also have like uh, what should I say respect for time <laughs> yeah he here in Korea like uh, generally people people call it pali pali right yeah so people uh, like to be on time and do everything on time and uh, have a time for everything basically so uh, people will always like uh, uh, let's say it's like uh, going to work and people will always have like a uh, set aside uh, there's a work day work period and uh, rest days and uh, uh, when it's uh, the end uh, and especially during Chuseok and Solal too it's um, basically rest time and so there's no work and this is like kind of strictly not very strictly yeah but kind of strictly followed yeah but back in my country I would say like people are a, li a little bit more relaxed <laughs> about time yeah, yeah and so they will we don't really have like the Pali, Pali culture as much as in Korea yeah so uh, to that extent in terms of respect for time then there is that difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, and following uh, that, Dr. Shin left a comment saying that when he was young, Koreans yeah. used to be late for appointments. So Korean time at uh -huh. that time yeah. used to be used to mean being late. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. were more relaxed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we have a similar concept. It's called the African time. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Thank you and. Uh, for now, we don't have any questions, but yeah. I personally wanted to ask, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, have you watched the movie Interstellar? Interstellar, unfortunately, no, it's on my watch list. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a bit um, unfortunate that you haven't seen it, but yeah, yeah I would recommend because it's also, it also explores the concept of time and yeah, yeah, I just yeah, wanted exactly. to ask your, your opinion. So maybe yeah, after you watch, uh, and we can I have watch, another talk. Yeah, yeah, I can get back <laughs> to you, yeah. Maybe after solving the question if time is a concept or reality, then I should definitely give a talk again. <laughs> so yes, and then final question, what do you think? Is time the concept or a reality? Huh. <laughs> huh. This is hard, but as long as I'm alive, as long as I'm on earth, I think it's my reality. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's nothing I can do about it because uh, all the... Uh, everything around me is like time-based. Uh, we have to do like time. This talk is uh, limited to uh, maybe like around an hour and I have to be done by that and move on to other stuff. So 
it's our reality. There's nothing we, do, we have to do about it. But in the event that I had a choice, I would say that time is basically a concept. Like if I take a, uh, if I kind of just take myself out of the picture and have a view of everything, just of the world, the past, the present day, uh, the future maybe, then I will say like it's just a concept. Time is a convention. It's like a promise. It's like money. It's between people. Yeah. So they made a promise. Let's keep time. Yeah. It's the same thing with currencies, the way they work. It's just a human convention. So yeah there is a saying that the time is money and you should yeah. invest it properly right exactly and yeah we have another comment from kim yong im yeah. and she says that uh when she was in the uk in uh -huh. back in 1997 uh, uh -huh. she was very surprised to hear that one of her professors said that korean time is uh, i guess to be on time yeah oh yeah so that basically the party party culture <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah yeah Oh, back in the 90s, well, well that means they were, well, <laughs> uh, we are, we are at a different stage of life now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so many things changed, right, from there. Yeah. And yeah, as you said, uh, the definition of time became more precise and uh, yes, thanks to the science, scientific development and achievements, we know that uh, one second is uh, nine billion. Um, yeah, and, and, nine yeah, and we can ticks of a cesium atom. Atom. Yeah, and yeah. this is this is the, the accuracy, like the very very precise accuracy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, just the final thoughts. I was thinking, why do we need to measure the time if it's just a concept, right? Yeah, yeah. But then I realized that maybe, uh, yeah, we need it for, um, for example, to go to space, right? It is very, exactly. it is very crucial to know the time mm -hmm. precisely. For yeah, all exactly. these engines work. Exactly. Yeah, so. yeah, like if you look at the invention of time, it's what makes travel possible nowadays. Yeah. When you get offshore and you have no sense of land in any direction, or uh, you you look at the your location, but it's actually based on time. Yeah. So that's why. And the GPS system too, it's based on time. So space travel too, time travel too. That's why people keep on searching on time. Yeah, it's just, you know, it's just a simple, simple topic about time and you we live with, with it every day. But uh, if, you talk, if you start talking about it, it's really a broad topic indeed. And unfortunately, we cannot cover everything in just an hour. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would I would uh, hope that we can have other like part two of the yeah, talk yeah, about the time that, where we yeah. can explore more about the concept of time is it rea exactly. reality or just the concept that people created mm -hmm. so thank you very much for your time and the insightful topic i enjoyed it a lot and i hope that our audience also enjoyed it and they have more thoughts to more topics to think about it and to maybe to think yeah what time is really in reality and on this note let me thank everyone for joining for your precious time uh, <laughs> and let me introduce just briefly uh, the next JIC talk uh, next Sunday it will be about learning a foreign language I think it's a very important topic it is very interesting and it will be uh, it will be discussed from a personal experience um, and the invited guest is uh, Frank from Rwanda. Mm -hmm. And if you're interested, I think many of us are in, in learning foreign language, I guess this is the talk for you. So please join us next week, same time, same link. Thank you everyone, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Thank you so bye much. Bye-bye. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you.